for listening to some of you guys are listening to. It's up with Jay and Monica. And this is Jay. Hello, this is Monica. Um, so, this week we are going to talk about ways for college students to make money. Uh, let's just jump right into it. Um, since college students are pretty busy people, I'd say, uh, a lot of times people are just looking for part-time jobs or maybe something quick on the side to make some easy money because that, even if it's a small amount, <coughs> you can't add up. So these are some online side hustling IPS. For most people, an online side hustle is the easiest way to get started and you can find free Wi-Fi. Um, a lot of places in the startup costs are minimal. I know our school has free Wi-Fi. I don't really know if it's free. Maybe it's included in the tuition. I don't know, but we do have Wi-Fi that we can connect to almost anywhere. Yeah, I believe it's free um, on our campus because I live on the lower campus. Yeah. yeah. So the first one would be blogging. Blogging is a great side hustle because you can do it at your own pace where anywhere you want. It's not a quick an easy way to make money, but there are a lot of ways to make money side hustling while blogging. You can sell advertising, become an affiliate for other people's products, sell your own online product, and more. It does take time to build up an audience to be able to make a decent amount of money. Once you have a large following, you can earn over $15,000 or $15,000 per month or more. Um, so yeah, you can, an affiliate I think means like you would uh, like advertise their products in a certain way. Like you can advertise on your own website with like a banner or something like that. But an affiliate means like you're kind of sneaking it into <coughs> an article or whatever you're writing about, which could be nice if you want. To, if you don't want to just bog your site down with advertising, but it is hard to do because sometimes you need to make your own website. Although there are lots of sites that you can do that you can use to get your own domain name and stuff like that, but. It still would be challenging and time consuming, but you can do it at your own pace and wherever you want. So I guess that's pretty nice and it has a decent income potential if you do have the following. Obviously you gotta promote your stuff and have the right idea on how to uh, market yourself. Yeah, um, speaking of that, um, I did have a blogging site. Um, I don't know if you go to, because uh, sometimes they have the uh, create your own website um, things on the web, like if you Google it. Um, the one that I used, it wasn't, you can do like a whole lot on there. Uh, you can even do like a contact me button at the bottom and you can, uh, you know, customize it however you like. Um, the only thing that I would say is, like for the website I use, they did like a $5 a month you to do like extra stuff and I know most of them would do that uh, depending on which ones you choose you'll be able to do more um, depending on whatever package comes into play. Mm -hmm. like here. Yeah GoDaddy has some kind of packages and stuff like that it just depends on what you're looking for what your needs are if you need like a lot of uh, storage space that kind of stuff. Uh, next one is online surveys. You have, have time to swear online you could spend at filling out online surveys. There are sites that will pay you to do so and it's very easy. All you have to do is register and those companies will contact you when they have a survey that fits your profile. Typically these are online market research surveys for big brands. Um, I've personally done a few of them. They just sometimes when you fill out your information or maybe you'll go through the entire survey, a lot of times they'll come back with this doesn't uh, fit your profile. So I would watch out for that because it does, sometimes they are like 20, 30 minutes. And if you, you know, pick the wrong one, then it's like, uh -oh. um, But some of the popular online survey sites include Survey Junkie, Swagbook Surveys, My Points, Opinion Outpost, uh, Springboard America, and there's a whole bunch of other ones. You just search the internet. Really. And then the income potential for that is $50 per month, maybe more, maybe less. It depends on what kind of uh, site you're using and wherever that is. And then the next one is just search the internet. So if you're just on there searching, uh, why not get paid for it? You can use Swagbucks, which I mentioned earlier. 
It rewards you for doing various online tasks like taking surveys, watching videos even, and using their search engine. And when you use their search engine, you get reward points after several searches and usually in the amount of 10 to 15 points. And then you can start cashing out for maybe like gift cards or cash or that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, have you done uh, one of the surveys? Yeah, through them, yes, I have done swipe books before. And it, it's like a plug-in on your computer. I used to have it on my old computer where if you enable it, it can track what you're doing via the internet. And if you accrue so many points, you can get gift cards and stuff like that. And it, it was worth it for a while, but sometimes it just gets time consuming and annoying. And then yeah, I did, um, I did try to do one of the survey things. They also have one where if you, um, if you actually try something out for them, they'll pay you. Uh, they will sometimes send you to them in different locations, and they'll pay you that way too. Uh, my mom's friend was doing that, and I was trying to find it. Um, it's like really hard to find those, though. If you guys yeah. are interested in finding them, it takes because a while. Some of them are scammers, so just watch out for that. And but companies really do take that seriously. It's a form of marketing. They want to know how old you are, where you live, even maybe not exactly, but you could just say like the state or the northeast or wherever. Yeah. And they want to know if you want to buy their products. They don't want to waste money on products that no one's going to buy. So it's important and you can find them, but like finding the right one and ones that will be worth your while tend to be a little bit harder. But nothing in life comes easy, so I suppose that's the that advice of this. So number four, sell on Amazon. If you have old books, CDs, or DVDs, you could consider selling them on Amazon. It's easy to list your items to sell and you'd be surprised how much you can get for old stuff sometimes. Um, for college students specifically, your old textbooks. Um, you could compare the Amazon prices to your bookstore buyback prices. Um, and it definitely is, I've done it before, it's a better place to sell your textbooks because nine times out of ten you go to the bookstore that maybe you bought the book at and they buy it back for like a very small fraction of what you have paid for it. So it's like not even worth it. You might as well go on Amazon and see or even eBay, something like, something like that, where people can bid and like you can kind of adjust the price as needed because it's just way more worth it for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, um, you know, I never heard of that. Um, I did hear of they have like the apps and stuff on the phone. Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember exactly what uh, apps it was, but I did purchase something from someone there, and I know uh, on Facebook, if you have stuff, uh, you will get there even quicker. But um. We will be back to talk about some more things. Fiverr. We'll be back to talk about Fiverr. It's a selling site. So we'll be back. We are back. Oh. Um, next one, side hustle. It's going to be sell gigs on Fiverr. Uh, Fiverr. Fiverr is a micro selling site where you can sell all kinds of random projects for design work. Just simply recording yourself on video talking about a brand. Um, yeah, wow, that's cool. So I think it's kind of like Etsy maybe with a little twist to it because Etsy you can make stuff and have to create your own shop. Yeah, and Etsy is where I get like my son's um, stuff, like stuff that they don't have in stores. Yeah. Uh, he wanted um, what did he, he wanted a Teen Titans party and uh, I had to get stuff from Etsy there like because uh, they don't even sell that stuff. In yeah. Stores. If it's like old or in, I know that they had these really cool customized Tim and Merlin boots. Like they were completely painted and all that stuff, like hand painted stuff, really good quality. You really just have to hunt around, but definitely Etsy, opening your, up your own Etsy shop would be sort of like this. Um, it's basically just selling your talent. What if, if you have something that you're good at, try to capitalize on it. It won't be easy, but it definitely would be uh, worth it. And then the income potential for that is $300 a month. Obviously, these are just like baseline. Uh, they could go either way, less, more, depending on okay. how much you want to work, how much you want to do, what you want to put out. Well, if you're doing a couple of these, um, I mean, you should have like five hundred hours, depending on you know what you're doing. It's easy to just. Did they say how long you have to talk about the brand at all? No, I think it would I think it would depend on the brand itself. I'm sure each one has different requirements. Like if you watch YouTubers. Um, they do like part paid partnerships and sometimes they talk for like a while and they just skip through and then sometimes it's just a quick thing, oh thank you for sponsoring, thank you Coke for sponsoring this video and they just talk about a Coke product for like three minutes, 30 minutes, not three minutes, but like 30 seconds and then they're 
on to the next thing, but sometimes it's longer and they want specific things from you and all that kind of stuff. So I think it would depend on the brand or who's asking. Oh, that's good. Um, so our sixth one is uh, selling things on eBay. Um, as Monica mentioned before, um, just like some of the things on Amazon, they do have eBay and another one that you mentioned. Can't remember. But um, eBay is a great place to sell stuff and earn money, especially if you have uh, something collectible. Um, I know that, like, I guess your know, parents, if you guys have older grandparents, um, they have stuff like uh, China closets. Like, my, I don't know if, if you guys do it or if your family does it, but like, they keep certain stuff. Okay. Like, we still have the um, the telephone from like mm -hmm. their childhood, the one that has the string on there, and you yeah. walk around with it. Yeah, I don't know why I still got that. The inchworm um, Barbies. Oh, my aunt has one of the first Barbies that came out and it's still in the box and stuff. She doesn't touch it. So um, that could be worth some money. Uh, and some people might do estate sales, which means someone, I think it means when someone pulls down a home or whatever and they're, selling, they're just get, trying to get rid of everything. Um, you can find cheap stuff. Like I would even go as far as to say like a garage sale or something. Maybe go pick up something and then sell it on eBay for um, an increased price point. I mean, it's, it's all up to you on what, what you want to price things as, but then you can resell them and make money off of that. I mean, that's a crafty way to get your money. Why not? And usually things like garage sales are like 50 cents, 25 cents. I mean, I've seen things yeah. that are worth way more than that, but people just want to get rid of it, so they're like, here, I'm willing to let go of it for a very discounted price. So, um, and then, oh, the next one is sell craft something. Yeah. Creative, maybe selling your own creative products is the way to go. You could paint something, you could make shoes, you could do just about anything. Oh, jewelry, I know a lot of people who crochet. Like There's people on YouTube that crochet like uh, t shirts and stuff, blankets, uh, baby booties, like stuff like that, scarves. Um, they make a whole lot of money. I am trying to learn how to crochet. <laughs> Sell your stuff. I mean, if there's, if you have enough people buying, I mean, I don't see why not. That would be just like any other job. Next one is online coaching or consulting. Beyond blogging, you can also become a coach or consultant for others, especially if you have some skills that people are looking for. So if you're like a workout guru, this would be a great place for you. Um, if you're a social media person or you have great online business skills, selling your time and hopping on a Skype call or Google Hangout is a great place. Um, yeah, pretty much. If you like working out, you think you're good at it, meal planning, I know that's a big thing now. Health, oh, beauty, maybe you're good at makeup. I know I'm not. But if you're good at makeup and you want people to learn from you, then do that. Honestly. They do have a lot of makeup tutorials. Everybody does makeup differently. Um, and they all have their own, their, they have their little tweaks and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I know the in, index card thing, that's for the wings. Oh. I don't hmm. use that though, I'm freehand. I have to, I don't know, <laughs> it just looks like it's too perfect, like, oh yeah, she used something. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the potential uh, income that you can make for this is 100 uh, per month. But I know, I've seen people like on Instagram uh, who do their coaching thing and they have their own app and that's like, that means you're making like, yeah. big bucks. If you well, for YouTube, that. actually YouTube would be um, one of the things yeah. on there, yeah, because, um, well, I haven't started my YouTube channel yet, but um, I know YouTube will get in contact with certain people if your channel is having, I don't know, it's like full of subscribers and they'll start paying you like, just to be making videos. I know Donna oh. Wilson, oh, yeah. uh, she gets paid a lot. Um, I guess her and her son now is, I don't know, it's just a whole lot. That's why I'm about to start very soon. So. I think that how YouTube works, this is a loose interpretation what I heard one of them say is once you get enough followers and you, you can't just have like you know, a thousand a hundred or whatever you once you get really up into the ranks they pay based on advertising so a lot of the times you are not looking at a solid like okay I make I'm a say you're a doctor so I make two hundred thousand dollars a month or a year or whatever three hundred thousand dollars a year and you're getting like a monthly paycheck it's not like that like a lot of times it's kind of a little one and then a big one and it fluctuates and it varies so it's kind of like a weird pay schedule but i think that's how it goes and it is based on ads and then if you can do um 
like partnerships or something like that, that's extra money as well. So if you do a thank you for sponsoring my video, that's where the money comes in. And that's where I think they make their major bucks. So if you can get a brand to collab with you, that's, yes, do that. Next one, online freelancing. Um, there's a lot of freelance work online. Uh, you can sign up for sites like Upwork or you can even become your own online freelancer. Um, some people have made over 10000 on the side by online freelancing and, you know, they have a whole lot of resources that can help you get started. And uh, you can earn $1,000 on the side. I guess that's like the potential earning for that. Um, but we will speak about more of a place to make money. Publishing. And we're back. Next one, ebook publishing. Have a story you want to tell? Maybe you should write an ebook or sell them on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Um, no. Ebook meaning you just release it yourself. I don't, I don't really know what that means or sell them on Amazon. I think actually, you know what? I think I know a guy that did it. He did like a inspirational self help kind of book, and he released it. And I think it was available on Amazon. Um, and an audio book, he kind of went all out, and um, I think he makes money on it. I think, uh, I would wonder though, how much you have to pay, like Barnes and Noble, if you're gonna put your book on their site, I don't, I don't know what that kind of would look like, but yeah, you could get that done if you were motivated, if you have a story to tell, and then income potential for that is $750 per month. This is one of the higher ones, I don't know, I think it would all depend on where you would want to, what platform you'd want to put it up on, and if not all of them, and all that kind of stuff, but it would be, if you write a good enough book, I feel like it. Yeah, I would say something like, well, since we're college students, um, how I got, how I got through college, <laughs> mm. I would definitely write a book like that. Interesting. Um, at the, at the time being, I can't do it, but. <laughs> I have actually mm -hmm. never heard That's of one of the more time consuming ones I would I would assume. I yeah, if you're not working, if you're not in a sport, if you're not I mean, I don't know, some people can handle it, some people can't. Um, so our eleven is sell stock photos. Perhaps taking pictures is your forte. If you are a great photographer, you could possibly sell your photos online. Sites like iStock Photo are always looking for contributors um, who get paid a royalty um, every time their photo is purchased. This could be a great way to turn your art into some extra cash. Um, I believe free... Sometimes they, Freepix has like a uh, place yeah. where you can subscribe, I'm sure, for money. I don't know if they do like individual things. I think that's more so a package, but that website sounds like it's just individual by um, picture to picture basis. I wonder, yeah, that would be a good idea. And then it said, also says if you can create digital images, um, you could also consider selling your work. I'm not sure if it's on iStock Photo or any other place. Um, but you can do that as well. So even if you can't take pictures um, and you can do Illustrator or whatever, that would be a great way to get your, make logos for people who even do that. Oh, I don't that's even think good about one. that. But yeah, you can make logos for people or even just start small and then keep working your way up. That is one. Oh, the income potential is 500 per month, so that's high too. Actually, that's pretty good. 500 a month? Stop doing that. Hey, why not? I stock photos, and I'm not sure where you would put dim digital images, but... I mean, where if you took photography class. Did you take photography? Mm -hmm. okay, well, you can do that. I can sell some of my photography. There we go. And I know a couple of people on campus who have their own little freelance thing going. Oh, and yeah. Have yeah. Own freelance, and you can do that as well, which just basically means you're out in the community, not so much. She's on social media. But yeah, she is. She um, also. Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, she gets on her little game and does some a little something for a shoot, $45, 25 whatever it is. Um, it, add, it will add up, I'm sure, if we had her in here, she could come in. Next one is do micro tasks on Mechanic Turk. Uh, another micro task site, I guess that's what these things are called, micro tasks. Um, it's Amazon's Mechanical Turk. The gigs on this site pay incredibly low amounts, less than a nickel typically. However, they take seconds 
and you can so basically it would just be like you want to spend a couple hours you're gonna earn maybe like 20 30 40 bucks mm -hmm. something like that I need a nickel on all of my math a little off there but you get the picture like you have to do quite a few micro to get where you want to be money wise but yeah this is not a lot that you get from your potential income is fifty dollars per month um, that is a little something on the side I mean yeah if it's not your main job this um, one website user testing oh, so it's basically just like trying out a product and yeah it. Yep. trying out a website seeing I don't know if this involves like knowing how to code and stuff like that if they're looking for like bugs in a website I'm not sure but um, website owners post gigs to the site and you simply log in and give feedback um, and usability rating on different websites and online apps. So you can do it for apps too. And it says you can earn up to $10 for each test you participate in. That is up to, so who knows, maybe there's some for $2, maybe there's some for a dollar. But if you do enough of these, that's basically the theme here. If you do enough of one of these things, chances are you can make a decent living. So this is $100 per month. I'm sure that's based on the lowest, but again, okay. yeah. the more you do, the more you get. So our number 14 is uh, creating an online course. Uh, do you have something to teach? Uh, you can teach something online at sites like Udemy, I think that's how you say it, <laughs> dot com. Uh, there are courses online for just about anything, and you can charge whatever pricing you feel is right for your instruction. Uh, you see, you'd be surprised on what topics are out there that people want to learn about and maybe you don't think you can teach anything, but it's possible that if you have a skill that others want to learn. Um, your potential income for this is 500 per month, which is pretty good to me. I mean, I cook, so just doing that, or like, I do my own hair sometimes, and that can take up some time, so Even like weird things you wouldn't think people would want to learn about, like how to use an iPhone. Maybe there's a lot of old people out there that don't know how to use an iPhone. I know a few old people. Maybe simple as that. Um, you would be like things said that you'd be surprised. How many people. This one, become a virtual assistant. Do you enjoy writing social media and blogging, but don't want to start your own blog? You can find virtual assistant jobs where you help other people run their sites and social media accounts. Depending on the amount of time you have, the side hustle can become a full-time gig. I don't know if they had that. I really like the idea of that, not just because I see a couple of zeros after the income. <laughs> potential. It's I like it because like that's great. Maybe you could send someone. It'd basically be corresponding over email, I'm sure, which is like a majority of jobs. But um, you could just send them your schedule. They send theirs back. What you want to do, what they want you to do, and basically just go about it that way. And you don't. Wow, and you can do that remotely. I'm moving from your house, from school, wherever you want to do it from. Um, yeah, I guess you can just have the app on your phone. Convenient. Be underneath their account. Like you can do Google Docs, maybe. Who even knows? It, depending on what they want you to help, if they want you. You know what? I think I'm going to be interested in this. Because the potential outcome is three thousand dollars per month. That's of course on the higher end of things, and who yeah. knows what they want you to do. Which I mean, if I'm on my social media every day, I can forget about my social media to be on somebody else's. <laughs> Especially if I'm getting paid that much. I mean, I do not mind. <laughs> That's an interesting. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really give a place where like they, you know, like the say start at blah 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 dot com. So I don't know. I'm gonna Google virtual assistant yeah. and see what comes up. And we'll be back. Okay. All right. So next on the how we how to make money um, for college students, we have a teach English online. Are you a teacher? Well, a teaching major. Um, and do you or, or do you <laughs> at least have a bachelor's degree from an American college or university? If so, you can teach children in other countries English online. Um, actually, I they have jobs now open um, here around Dallas. Um, I, think, I think it's around here, or maybe not. Maybe it's online. I don't know. But if you look up um, jobs near here all the time, whatever, it'll come up um, as a teacher to teach, teach English. Which I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm just like I mean, I can teach it. I speak English, but I'm not sure exactly what they mean. Um, the cool thing is that teachers are making 
14 to 22 dollars per hour online from the comfort of their own home which is great um and another similar service is QKID, where you can teach english even if you're just enrolled in college so that would be a good thing for the educational majors and um, it would be like great experience um, yeah so that like it would be great experience you can put that on your resume I have experience teaching kids in foreign countries, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. it's, if it's a legit, it's, really um, it's a legit uh, website too, so that would be good. Because I know some people will probably look up, like, oh, well, what's QKID? Um, they also have VIP kid too. Um, the potential income for this is $1,000 per month. So that will come in handy. Mm -hmm. Next one is micro, micro and entrepreneurship ideas. These ideas are a little bit different than the typical hustle. They are based on entrepreneurship and asset leveraging to make even money, even more money for you. They can lead to passive income off over time if done well. Passive income to me just means like you're doing barely anything. So I don't know, they don't really elaborate on that, but who knows? Next one is a big one. Become an Uber and a Lyft driver. Uh, if you love the idea of ride sharing as a side hustle, then this may, may be one of the few jobs on here that you can do 100% uh, on your own time. This is like, if you only want to drive in the middle of the night, cool. Or just on the weekends, or just five days a week because you don't want to deal with people on the weekends. That's it too. So this is like all you. You can do whatever you want to do, um, or you can only take like the most high paying uh, rides ones that are really far, or just ones that are quick jaunts around the city or whatever. Um, I think it's a good earning. It is, it definitely is. Uh, Uber and Lyft um, is one of the two things that I would recommend somebody to do. Um, the only thing with both of those, you have to have um, your own insurance. Yeah. I know if you're underneath, like if you're on like your parents' insurance or stuff like that, you have to get them uh, proof of that. Because if, if you're not and you're just underneath your parents, do you use that with Uber? No, um, I do DoorDash. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So that's why I don't do it. That's why you don't do it. Okay. Yeah, and I don't you have to be old? I mean, yeah, you, gotta, you actually have to send them in your license. I know this is the same thing with Uber or in, in Lyft. Um, I will, I'm not 25. No, no, that's what I thought. That's why I was like, that's why I said that. I was like, I don't no, know. Uh, I just think you gotta have your license. Um, I know, well, I guess. I, I thought I, there was some kind of a weird thing, but maybe not. I, I'm not really sure. But, and then you have, you, your car has to be made after a certain year. So if you have like a really ancient vehicle, yeah. it's not. Yeah, like your car either. does have to be. Um, I think it's after like 07 or 08 or something. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um. So the potential, oh, there is none. Okay, well. Well, that varies, I guess, about yeah, where does. you're driving at. And I would say, I wouldn't yeah, say yeah. a month, but I would say probably about 500 a week. Um, like my, I know my, my friend does it. Uh, he does it like part-time and stuff like that, and that's how much he makes, and I think he sits that to the side because he goes on like vacation trips and stuff um, across the world. So I think it's a really good thing and, and a really good way to save up. Um, but you could make your own um, schedules, and they do sometimes have, like I guess, like a peak moment. Like yes, buses. like it'll um, it'll be like during the night. Sometimes the rates will rise up, and then I know yeah. that we had a parade in Binghamton, where I'm from, and they were they were paying double the amount. So if the ride right. was seven dollars, would be fourteen dollars, like right off of that, mm -hmm. and probably way more than that. So drivers were coming in from like Syracuse because my grandpa's an Uber driver. Uber driver, and he said that drivers were coming in from like all over to like come and make money because they knew that it would be very lucrative. So if if you live in like a busy area, I don't think it's that busy, but if you live in like a real busy area, there's like a good potential for you. Right. Um, the next one that we have on this list is uh, delivering food for Uber Eats. So same thing applies. Um, you can make your own schedules and stuff. Uh, just this time, you're not riding a person around. You're basically just going to go pick up their food for them. I'm not sure how Uber Eats works um, in terms of like instructions and stuff because I do DoorDash, but um, the oh, potential so income uh, varies from driver to driver and depending on how much you work. 
Well, so there's a great deep for families. You can have the kids in the car while the parents work, so you can like multitask. You can do, yeah, this is good. I like that idea. I, heard, I didn't think of that. You don't have to have people in your car, so if you're weird about all that, and that's like the interior, that, that's a great way to eliminate that and still get the job done. And is it like, I wonder if it's comparable to the pay of a regular Uber driver. I'm not sure, but. Yeah, I would think that it's a little bit um, less, probably because, you know, like, I, I, I don't know, for me, um, I think Uber and Lyft would be a lot more money, because you're actually, you have to go pick somebody up, and you have to take them this place, and I know some people need tips and stuff, so that's good, too. Um, aside from Uber Eats, they do have uh, Postmates, and they have Grubhub and DoorDash. I know Grubhub, and I'm not sure about Postmates. I've just seen that, actually. It's it's pretty new That to delivers me. everything. That's not just Oh, it does? That's like, I think it's like from a store, like mm -hmm. if you want 7-Eleven or whatever, like just like a soda, like that kind of thing, like they pick it up for you. It's a little oh, different. I'm pretty, okay. that's what the advertisement looks like. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, I haven't seen, I just know it looks like a Yeah, because I don't think they have just, it. You know, think like, they have that, like, in California. Yeah, yeah, that's, I was like, I don't think Oh, yeah. indulging. Well, that's probably why, because and, well, I, I have was, a bike up I'm there. I'm thankful <laughs> for that, because I'm going to spend too much there. I'd be like, mm, yeah. this is that. I don't have to leave my house for the next six weeks. Like, right. I know, um, I don't know. I know with DoorDash, because I work, and I pretty much work whenever I want to, um, but I, well, just last week, um, I made $168, and that's only working for three days. Um, and I didn't work a whole eight hours, um, I think I worked like six hours, but yeah, that's what I did. So you guys could make money, but we will be right back after these commercials. DoorDash. Okay, We're so back. just wanted to say a little bit more about DoorDash. Um, you do have, depending on where you are, because um, when you first start DoorDash, I know some people have received bags and stuff. Um, they'll give you like the hot space bags. Um, with DoorDash and they also have if you go to the actual DoorDash store which is I don't know it could be I know from here for me theirs is like an hour two hours away from me here around here but I know when I go back home it's only like 30 minutes away I'm um, in New Brunswick um you can get like uh, the DoorDash t-shirts they have oh. um they give they give you a card that you can activate so what basically happens is um, some people can pay with their card and it'll pop up um, that they already paid mm -hmm. and you just go and pick the food up. And um, when you go there, like you have to slide like a bar and stuff, uh, you use your GPS, you gotta slide the bar over to say that you're there and then it'll tell you the person's name, what they ordered, you're supposed to check everything down that you ordered first um, and then you put that you're done, that you got everything and then they'll give you the directions to the person's house. Like, you don't get everything at one time. <laughs> that would be overwhelming. Yeah, and I know uh, it usually, like, pops up. They also do have pluses, like Uber and Lyft. Um, their pluses is so more of, like, when is when, it, when it's really busy. Uh, you'll even get text messages. I know they text me, um, even when I'm not on the schedule, they'll text me and say, hey, Ayana, um, I don't know, it's, it's a plus four right now. We're really busy out here it's not a plus four because i don't think that um doordash has gotten out there like that yet so i know me and my friends use yeah. it a little bit but it's sporadic right, because it does yeah the highest something. that i've seen was 250 a plus 250. um that's how i made five i guess or plus. i made 77 dollars that, that night but um yeah it's it's definitely not Oh, if you're not, here. yeah, if you're not like in a big at area. home, because my yeah. mom does it, and um, she was doing it like full time, mm -hmm. but like at home around dinner time with them, it's a plus seven, plus eight. Like they're getting money smacked. I didn't get it out there, but I need my mom's account, and she gets paid. Like, yeah, and you gotta, cool. you actually have to keep up. Um, I know that they do direct deposit. Mm -hmm. Um, every Monday they do direct deposit, so every week it'll tally up how much you made. Um, and then uh, you'll get your direct deposit Monday or Tuesday, depending on what banks you have. Um, you you have you do have a rating, like the customers will rate you. Um, I know a little four point, and they do a think of four is good, because that's what they usually do, four or five stars. But yeah. I don't know, I know the, the below a four, uh, they're like kicking off, so. Yeah. 
you definitely have to. It's, it's, I think they do it on everything, like, Uber too. Yeah, I think, like, yeah. you start to get a little, the, the ratings is bad. like, it yeah, it really does. Bad. The, the ratings are based off of, um, like, if you, if you are smiling, if you knock on the door, if you got in contact with them, if you let them know, hey, I'm still waiting on food, I'm sorry, I might be running a little late, mm-hmm. like, stuff like that, um, and you can also, you know, have raped the customers that you go to the houses. I know I had only one incident. Uh, the lady kind of took what I said out of content. <laughs> yeah, I told her that it was kind of dark because I couldn't see anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like driving at night. And I didn't have my glasses. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's dark out here. And she's like, oh, don't, don't act like I live in the hood. And I'm like, what? Yeah, so you can, like, you can, like, look like a sad face. I know that I have, like, a happy face and sad face. We do readings and then oh that's how it goes it's not yeah. like one through for them it's just like happy face set yeah happy. and then it actually you like wh- whatever <laughs> bubbles it is it'll be like oh well what happened like uh, the sad face uh, the distance was too long uh you waited too long for the food mm-hmm. um customer was rude i get to be stuff like that so yeah not many horror stories for you and have you yeah. you did do door around here you didn't have any bad stuff happening just just that one time oh that was that was here yeah that was here. Oh, i thought that you meant that was at home <laughs> oh no no at home you know what we don't even do it like in uh our, like, i'm from Trenton, okay. but we don't do it in Trenton. we do it like next to train like uh somewhere like princeton area and towards new brunswick because that's where all of the money is like yes. <laughs> yeah so i only do it out here um i know out here I know they do pluses around dinner time, definitely. And it's like a dollar to two dollars and fifty cents uh, on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Sunday sometimes too, which is very surprising because yeah. you're thinking everybody's going to bed early because they have work and kids have school. But um, you definitely do make a whole lot of money with that, depending on how much you work. I mean, I only did three days and not that many hours, so yeah. Next one, become a tutor. Do you excel at a particular subject considering tutoring a younger student or even one of your peers? Um, you can check, actually, isn't it at, don't they post them like right out in banks um, by student engagement or whatever that office is? I, I've seen a couple of times where people are like, we have a 12 and 15 year old that need homework help with math. I've seen it out there before. Um, and then you can call a number or something and talk to the person. and do it that way and it's some, they pay tutors decently. I had to hire a tutor because I was terrible at math. Um, in high school, my parents had to hire the one for me and he made like 15 bucks an hour. Like that's yeah, they decent. Do that and only maybe you only have to be there for two, three hours. I mean, that's decent and you do it for, mm, I don't know, four times a week, maybe twice a week, maybe, who knows, depending on how much uh, the kid needs help. Could be a handsome little payment. Um, House sit for others. You can do that. Um, house sit or clean. Mm-hmm. Um, you many people will pay a responsible person to simply stay at their home and keep an eye on things while they're out of town. This might involve like tasks like taking in the mail or more responsibilities such as caring for pets. Uh, you can find websites like care.com or dog vacay that connect homeowners with potential house sitters. And same thing with uh, House cleaning, I think care.com does house cleaning things. And, or like Angie's List or something like that. Um, menial tasks, but they get the job done and you're still going to get paid. So. I did not know they had house sitters. I mean, yeah. Some um, people didn't do it with their neighbors. Like I know our neighbors sometimes will call on me in the summertime and yeah. say, hey, we're going away for a week. Would you mind watering the plants or something like that? Um, yeah. Just Or just keeping an eye out because you never know. They also have like dog Easy. walkers and stuff mm-hmm. like that too. Yeah. Um, if you're a dog lover, I like walking dogs. I do that sometimes too. Yeah. You, just, you know what? I thought about being, and I know it's like through companies. Like, uh, I guess you would say it's it's a part of house sitting, um, cleaning and stuff. Being like a house yeah. Maid. It could be. Some people do want you to clean their house. Some people are just like, eh, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, a few other ones is um, you can get a job as a mover. Ooh. I know one guy that that we go to school with here plays on a football team, and he's a mover over the summer. That's what he does. So when we get back, we'll talk about movers and other things. 
get a job as a mover. Okay. Um, mo many moving companies hire college students to augment their regular staff on busy weekends or breaks. Summer break in particular, I know for a fact. This will give you a more flexible schedule than many part-time jobs. Um, but there's there is a warning on here. Uh, many companies claim to be movers and scam clients and employees out of their money. Um, avoid these by just avoid these problems by checking out the company beforehand with the Better Business Bureau. They have like an F rating on the Better Business Bureau. Chances are they're just you know, however scamming clients. I, I guess they would just take their money first and then just never show up to move their stuff. Right. Just leave them to do it. But yeah, moving if you're a strong person and you like moving stuff around and you don't have a bad back, then this would be a job for you. And our next one is become a brand ambassador. Mm -hmm. um, major corporations hire people to promote their brand on college campuses. It's a fun way for outgoing students to earn extra money in college. And if you're passionate about a particular brand, that's a great plus too. Sites like, for work, I'm about to say, I don't know, it's whurk.com, however you pronounce that, uh, makes it easier to earn rewards by helping some of the world's biggest brands. And I have to check that out. And it, yeah, and it says it's a great resume booster because if you uh, if you're in touch with big name brands, that means that uh, you're obviously worth some time, and people are spending time to talk to you and want you to represent their brands, which means that uh, you are good to go. So definitely hireable. But yeah, that's another one to put on your resume. There's a couple of these that have been like excellent. Uh, next one, get a temp job. Um, oh, a temporary job. Um, they have like different. Um, oh, seasonal job, you mean? Like, yeah, but with the temp job though, I mean, where I'm from, the temps, um, they can find them at any moment. Like, like if they need people, then they'll hire you. And then, if two weeks or three weeks later they don't need you anymore, you're out. Yeah, we check so. with local employment agencies for temp jobs. Agencies will help you find temporary, part-time jobs doing things like administrative work, data entry, and entering home or customer service tasks. Um, yeah, uh, ask, oh, this is a tip. Ask if the agency takes out taxes from your check or if that's something that you need to be responsible for paying to the state and federal government yourself. Uh, some agencies off also offer benefits if you work over a certain number of hours per week, which I would assume would mean uh, healthcare benefits. Maybe not, I'm not sure. Um, but definitely something to look into if you are looking for a part-time part -time job. Next one is running errands for people. Maybe like an elderly neighbor or something. Yeah. Usually you run to the grocery store or if they can't walk their dog or something like that. Carriers. Um, you could go to, become a go-to person to run errands for people in your dorm. Uh, say you have a car and not many other people do have a car when they go pay you and just kind of do it that way. You can do this as solo, solo enterprise or join a service like Rinse.com and make some quick money picking up and dropping off the dry cleaning. So it's kind of like Uber Eats for your dry cleaning. All right. Um, the next one is a, uh, well, the one that I like that kind of stood out. Why to be a residence advisor. Um, in this role, you'll provide emotional support and leadership to peers in your dorm. Um, your job is to create a positive living environment by promoting community involvement educating fellow students about dorm policies and insurance, ensuring uh, ma maintenance um, issues are addressed properly. Uh, I didn't say that. Uh, in this role, <laughs> you'll gain important leadership skills that will serve you well in your future career. In most cases, your room and board will be paid for. You actually live in whatever dorm uh, you're going to be. I know here um, in, in this, they have um, like in Miguel Hall, I know there's an RN. RD? Is that what you're looking for? Yes. RN registered nerd. Right. <laughs> there's an RD on every floor from what um, I heard. Because I just be in Miguel. There's an RA on every floor, and then the RD is usually at the bottom. RA. That's what I was looking for. RD is the one. RA. RD is, like is the people when you come in. Step. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're like, like day, yeah. it's like right there. They're overall, right? Yeah, they're no. over the RDs. Yeah, they're the like they oversee it all these so like Okay, yeah. Um, okay. Elena or something like that, like an alumni, you walk right in, that's the RD. Oh, 
Um, but you could apply to be an RD. I'm sure that that requires you to have at least maybe like a year of experience in RA. I don't, being an RA, I'm not sure if you just jump right to the RD. Maybe there's some I know kind of some people there. though. Some pe yeah, to me is one of the people that, that they graduated already or something like that. Oh, I know some students, people yeah. actually sit there right. all day. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know exactly what they're doing, but I know I, don't know, I met one of the uh, RDs yeah. uh, in McCall. They are graduate students, yeah, right? There. So they may might only take like three or you know a couple credits here. They're just taking a couple classes, so they can dedicate their time because an RA right. is way different than an RD. Right. The RA more so actually works with your schedule. Is in, yeah, and they're they're, they're, they're going to school here too. So yeah, it's definitely a difference. Next one is become a campus tour guide. I know a lot of students that do that. If you're outgoing and you love to meet new people, and you're passionate about the school, you may want to become a campus tour guide. Um, Likewise, admission officers often need extra help with fielding query, queries from prospective students and their families. Um, I also know people that work on admissions. It's a great way to share your experience with other students looking to follow in your footsteps. If you love this and you want to talk about it, that would be a great I thing to do. I to tour guide for admissions. It was fun. Yeah. Um, it takes up a whole lot of time, too. You'll be there for, I mean, well, you'll have to be there for yeah, because it doesn't take that long to walk the campus, but yeah. like if you're stopping at everything, explaining, you know. Well, yeah, it doesn't, but yeah, when you do that, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> it, I know it took me like uh, 45 minutes tops to an hour sometimes if I had more questions. Um, it depends on how many yeah. that's in your group as well, because it takes people a while to get into mm -hmm. a place and right. whatever, but yeah. That's another great, it's on campus, so it doesn't require you have a car or anything like that. You just walk over to where uh, the admissions place is and enjoy. Right. So for the, just for the rest of these, because I know um, most of these, they are underneath uh, work study positions yeah. uh, on campus and work study. You, you know, they work around your schedule, but then when you have classes and you can work in between there, so they'll take you to work like two hours or an hour at least, depending on where you're going and what your um, what your boss wants you to do. Um, so editing and proofreading your peers' papers, they do have that in the writing center. Um, becoming a teaching assistant, um, that's a work study, research assistant, uh, same things, thing. stuff like same that. Same thing as a teaching assistant. Yeah, I, I would think like uh, that would be in the science field so if you maybe you're in a junior senior or graduate student and you want to do that um, that would be your best bet if you are into science and we're doing another show today so we will talk to you guys in a couple minutes